Hey bunnies, welcome to Dev Diary. I'm feeling a bit sick today, so I'm just gonna just gonna turn off facecam completely because I don't look that great at the moment. Um, so in this episode, we didn't do that much. Uh, we made a we had a pause menu, and we made the we changed the boss's reset position to inside the location instead of on the player, so it doesn't spawn outside the map and confuse everyone. Yeah, so let's begin. I had an issue where the button animations were freezing because the time scale being zero. Oh. To start off with, the uh, menu um, was made in the last episode, but I cut it because there was no programming at all. It was just kind of playing around with settings, so I just left it in there. So all the visual stuff, that's, you know, for you to figure out, basically. Basically, I was, the animations were freezing for the buttons because the time scale being zero, so I had to tinker with it to allow the buttons to function, like, visually. Next, we tried to make an on-click script, after we figured that out, to give functions to all the buttons. Um, so this basically has a function for each button that will be in the game that leads to different scenes. We made a main menu scene in the last video, but I had no programming obviously. Important note, you need to include unityengine.sceneManagement in the libraries at the top of your script, and also use sceneManagement.loadScene to load levels. The last time I used Unity I did not have to do that. Um, I don't know when it was added, but... Yeah. Um, so after this, I added a scene to the build setting so that the scene loader understands the numbers of the scenes so you can actually switch between them. I had a lot of trouble getting the button strips to work last episode, which is why I didn't include any of the system. If there's anything that, you, that you're that you looking at and you're like, I don't remember that, that's probably the things that I've cut because it was just, it was it didn't work. So I added the scene choices to the script, so like different, you know, quit, main menu, that kind of thing. I then realized that the script wasn't supposed to be attached to the button, but the event manager um, so that's the thing, if you're building your own menu in Unity, if you're looking at this and you're looking at it as a kind of guide, the script for an on-click button needs to be on the event manager, not on individual buttons. Um, so this allows the buttons to choose a function and made the whole thing basically work. Uh, the reason the transparency, it wasn't like clicking in, was because there was no thing to actually make it work. There was no reason to have an animation if there was no script, like it wasn't doing anything. So I click the start button and it loads into the scene. Um, I then add a script to the event manager in the game scene and change that so I can quit to the main menu. Uh, I realized that the menu needed to unpause the game also, because if I joined back into the game it would start up paused but there would be no menu. Um, so I made the quit menu button unpause when making a public unpause variable in the game menu that unpaused the game when I clicked off the menu. I then tested a dev build, just like to test out if everything works, how it's supposed to work, and I believe it worked. Sometimes things don't work in the dev build and like in full screen as they do, like they do in engine build, which is why you usually have a build and have people test the build and then rebuild it kind of thing. Um, especially for things like Unity because it uses different OS, like you can port the game to Mac or to Linux or to iPhone and it does that by itself, and so code can get confused if you do that. Some things that you've coded might work for Windows and Mac, but maybe won't work for Linux or won't work for phones, and you have to kind of work around that and have like a Mac build specifically, or like a Linux build specifically, so you can fix all those little, little minuscule details that won't work in certain things. So I then played around with the dev build and discovered that it needed to run that the charge um, function needed to run through an animation without pausing and it kept pausing um basically it was charging me and then it would decide and then the ethereal form would tick over to a new attack so basically i gave it a charging variable i believe i end up giving everything a kind of variable so that if it's doing an animation it will not get confused and use another function um, but yeah, so I gave it a charging variable that runs through the variable so no other code will stop it. So if something, if it's charging, no other code will execute. It's basically the same as the pause menu. Um, I then changed its color to blue so I like know that this is charging, It's that, that's what it's doing. So if it does have a bug, I will know that that's, it's in the middle of the charging function that the bug is in kind of thing. I then started adding walls to the little testing area so that our ghosting attack will be able to work when it's coded. Um, our little wall, walking through walls attack, I guess. I don't really know. I, I've been calling it ghosting, but there's so many things that are ghosting as far as attacks go that it's hard to call it that. I'm gonna call it wall attack or 
something. Yeah, so I added the four walls to close the arena, I placed the boss in the center of the arena, and I changed the reset position to where the boss spawns. So where the original where the original spawn is of the boss, it'll only spawn in a circle around that, so that the player kind of knows that it's there, and it also doesn't ever appear outside the map. So at the moment we're using an analyst to decide where it's spawning, this like little kind of circle outside of the that's in this like range around the center or the player. What I kind of want to do is have a analyst and then remove anything that is connected to the player analyst so that it doesn't spawn around the player um, or behind the player to kind of make it so you're always kind of watching the enemy. But I don't think I'll do that during the dev diary so that'll just have to be in a new update if I do do it. So that's actually it. It's again very very short very short episode. Um, we didn't do, we actually, I, I mean, I did a lot, but it was mostly visual stuff, nothing to do with actual programming. And that's the point of the dev diary, the programming and the kind of mechanics of the game. So there's no point of me showing you the visual stuff that much, unless it's entirely necessary. Um, or if it looks good, I guess. And most of it, it's just kind of like placeholders for now. So yeah, that's it. We fixed a few bugs. We made a functional menu so we can quit the game with user prompting. Um, like I said in the last episode, you should never make an application or game quit without prompting. Everything needs user feedback. If you're ending a session, you want to make sure the player wants to end a session. It, otherwise, you're screwed. <laughs> um, escape should always equal a quit menu or a pause menu, not quit the application immediately, obviously. Um, and it should always have a kind of please save kind of thing. Uh, this game's gonna have a like a modern Dark Souls or Borderlands style saving system. Um, it'll save things on pickup, but not save everything. So like you will go into a new session each time, but your inventory will stay the same. It's kind of like a roguelite almost in that sense. Um, but I kind of I feel like it's more like a Dark Soulsy system. You know, there's there's like kind of save points, but it's not like a you're saving the inventory and everything else kind of respawns around you. Um, yeah, because the game's like very isn't linear. There's no level system. There isn't even a really a, a linear story inside it. You will pick up items out of order, and you'll have to piece it together at, in your own time. Kind of figuring out things by looking at the dates of like notes of the of like audio logs, that kind of thing, and going, okay, this happened before this. Hopefully. So next episode, we will work on the final attack. This isn't the final ability the boss has. Um, if you're playing the game in the future, if you're watching, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, the game has been released, may maybe sometime in the future, stay vigilant. This isn't going to be the last attack, but it's the final ability that I'm going to show you the programming of, and then I'll move to the to do uh, like a to do list. Basically, I'll write a huge list of things that I need to do, and I will complete them all before the next kind of developer update, as I, I will say, it's going to be, you know, it's not monthly, it's not daily, it's not weekly, it's just going to be when it's complete, I will show you my working. I'm not going to show you all the code because I don't want to spoil some things. I want the game to be, I want the game to be fun even, and I also want to teach you. And that, that's, it's a hard, it's a hard line to kind of go, okay, I don't want to spoil things, but I also don't want to, I don't want you guys to just be kind of bored because you don't know what the game's about yet. A hard line to kind of tread, I guess. So I will finish the list before the video, my, my to-do list, and then I will kind of decide what on that list I want to show you for like, spoiler free reasons and then i will give you the updates kind of bug fixes what i've done what i what i kind of want to do in the future and that's it for this episode thanks for watching please leave a like uh, and a comment and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already i don't, I don't know if you're, if you're watching this it's episode 12 or 13 right so you should be subscribed by now surely see you in the next one buddy out